Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we just want to tell you, thank you, God. Lord God, thank you for waking us up this morning and starting us on our way, God. Lord God, I stand here as a broken vessel, God. You are the potter and I am the clay. Lord God, I need you right now in this place, God. Less of me, God, and more of you. And it's in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Come on, can somebody put your hands together and bless God in this place? Oh, hallelujah, in this place. Can you bless him in this place? Come on, somebody make some noise in this place. Christ is head of my life, uh, my pastor and his wife. Uh, I want to thank God for my grandmother that came. my brother that I love and to all my other brothers that I've gotten since I've been here and most importantly to my wife that saved my life. And to all my kids, my daughters and my sons, I thank you and the whole St. Peter's family, I thank you very much and I promise not to be before you long, amen. Go ahead and have your seats, have your seats. <laughs> we'll be coming from Daniel, the third chapter. The 23rd through the 25th verse, but this is going to do the 24th and the 25th. The Bible says, then Nebuchadnezzar, the king was astonished from the King James Version, and rose up in haste and spake and said unto the counselors, did we not cast three men bound in the midst of the fire? They answered and said, O king, true, O king. He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. And if I had to put a title on this, look at your name and say, Neighbor, it's not your imagination. Come on, say it like you mean to say, neighbor, it's not your imagination. Just like these Hebrew boys, we find ourselves bound and thrown in the midst of the fire called life. It seems like every time we take a step forward, someone or something pushes us three steps back. The more we press, the more pressure we feel. We've come to a place in our lives when our faith will either stand up or fold under pressure. I want to encourage you today and let you know that what you're going through is all a part of God's plan. And what doesn't kill you will make you stronger. King Nebuchadnezzar made a decree to all the people of Babylon that when the music played, they were to fall down and worship the golden image that he had set up. And anyone that did not would be thrown in the fiery furnace. And when the music played, all the people fell down, but Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego stood up. The Shadins, the counselors to the king, brought accusations against these three Hebrew boys. King Nebuchadnezzar had these three boys brought to him and gave them two options. Either worship the image or be thrown in the fire. They told the king that it really didn't matter. Y'all heard me? It really didn't matter what he would do to them. They were not going to serve his God or worship the image. The king became irate, ordered the furnace be heated seven times hotter than it normally would be, bound them from head to toe, tossed them in the midst of the burning fiery furnace, and they fell down, bound in the midst of the furnace. Now for a minute, can we put ourselves in their shoes? Here you are. You have been thrown in this fire called life. There are flames all around you. 
the smoke has caused tears to run down your face and the and blurred your vision and the carbon monoxide is making you making it hard for you to breathe you can't see your way out it seems like the more you press the more pressure you feel the more you try to break free from some of the things that life holds you the more life tightens its grip in spite of how bad things seem, you cannot allow your condition to change your position. You have to go through to get through. Amen. Woo. And that's when spiritually our mental and our physical condition comes into play. I told him I was going to tell the story about a week ago. I said I wanted to get back in shape, and me and Minister Jafar, we went to the gym, and we went to the gym. We lift weights, and after we lift weights, I felt good. I went, went and ran errands, picked up my wife, picked up my kids, and I felt good. That night, I went to sleep. I woke up the next morning, and I felt kind of sore. So when I felt sore, I was like, okay, I still feel all right. I go to work. When I go to work, I come home, eat dinner, I go back to sleep. And when I go back to sleep, this time, it was different. This time when I laid down, every time I turned over, I was hurting. Every time I went, and then when it was time for me to wake up, I couldn't even pull my shirt over my, over my head. And that was because the pain that came was from the weight room. Somebody say the weight room. Come on, say it again, the weight room. That was the moment that being in the weight room didn't feel so good anymore. It was hard to function at work because my movement was restricted and the constant pain was a reminder that I had been in the weight room. So mentally and physically, the weight room had beat me up. But I realized the only way that I was going to get stronger was to get back in the weight room. And you, 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 you and you have wondered why things keep happening. And you felt that if it wasn't one thing, that it was another. And what it was was that God had to put you in the weight room. But not the W-E-I-G-T-H room, the W-A-I-T room. Because the Bible says in Isaiah 40 and 31 that they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And what Nebuchadnezzar thought would kill these three boys only made them stronger. And in verse 24, you see that King Nebuchadnezzar was shot and got up quickly and asked his counselors who were the same people that caused them to be thrown in the fire in the first place. Didn't we not throw three men bound in the midst of the fire? Because I see four. There you were in the midst of the fire. And when you thought you had reached your end, Jesus showed up and reminded you that there is peace in my presence. Now, if you can do me a favor and look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, you may not know this, but I am in the fire right now. It's not your imagination that you see a smile on my face. It's not your imagination that my praise and my worship has gone to the next level. It's not your imagination that you see me pray for those who despitefully use me. It's not your imagination that my hands are up. It's not your imagination that I'm giving God praise. So my brothers and my sisters, I want to let you know that the reason why the fire can't kill you, the reason why the fire can't stop your praise, is because you've realized that the joy of the Lord is your strength and that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. I dare somebody to open up your mouth and say, I'm coming out. I'm coming out. I'm coming out. I'm coming out. Put your hands together and give God a praise. Hallelujah.